final line of Wesleyan World Missions is telling men and women about Jesus Christ. The institutions, programming, and activities of Wesleyan missionaries today are ultimately focused on this one purpose, that people might come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and make Him Lord of their lives. To accomplish this purpose, the Wesleyan Church commissions missionaries and sends them beyond the borders of North America to carry on ministries in church planting, theological education, medical ministries, and relief efforts. The goal of Wesleyan World Missions is to see 2,000 overseas churches by the year 2000. Already Wesleyans in many countries are aggressively pursuing those goals. In Australia, for example, 30 churches have been started in the past seven years. Their goal is to have 90 churches by the year 2000. The church in the British Isles has taken a bold step this year, reorganizing into two districts under a national conference and launching a Bible school ministry. The new work in Germany is taking hold. A German pastor and wife have been installed this year in a recently established place of worship. A small congregation is developing. We expect to see further growth in the coming year. Theological education has always been at the forefront of World Mission's involvement. As people are evangelized, as churches are formed, Pastors are needed to nurture and establish the young church. Currently there are 16 Bible schools and colleges in 13 countries, actively training leaders for the Wesleyan Church of today. In Swaziland, for instance, students from the war-torn country of Mozambique risk their lives in crossing the border just to attend Emmanuel Wesleyan Bible College, enabling them to minister to their Wesleyan congregations back home. In Colombia, Nine students are being trained for the ministry amidst social unrest. In spite of threats and possible dangers, a new building has been added and teams of students continue with their program of evangelism and outreach. In Zambia, three students built their own houses just to have the chance of attending the Bible school in Pemba. Their desire is to reach their own people with the life-changing gospel of Christ. The need for pure medicines and quality medical care is great in the world, especially in many parts of the world where Wesleyan World Mission serves. Last year, over 377,000 patients were seen. These patient contacts often are combined with opportunities to share about Christ. Many hundreds of lives are changed each year, both medically and spiritually, through the medical outreach ministry. Even though the staffs of the three hospitals and 14 dispensaries are exhausted at the end of their day, they realize that they're only reaching a very few of the people needing their help. More will be waiting for them in the coming new day. People who have needs beyond the medicine they receive. In times of emergency and natural disaster, Wesleyan World Missions has been on the scene with assistance. In St. Croix during Hurricane Hugo, following the earthquake in the Philippines, helping Liberian refugees. Many churches in the Western World Fellowship are coming of age. Missionaries have done their job of training pastors and developing church leadership. In some countries, this development is at a partnership level, where the missionary works with Wesleyan leadership toward the goal of self-sufficiency. For those churches now under their own direction and vision, the missionary's presence, if needed, is there in a supportive role, such as a teacher in a Bible school, or medical personnel in a hospital, or training situation. As a church matures, it begins to reach out, either in new areas of its own country or other countries of the world. A Wesleyan church was started in Jakarta, capital city of Indonesia. 
The new work is starting among the 4.5 million Sutu-speaking people of Laboa in South Africa. The Australian church has a new congregation on the island of Tasmania. Wesleyans are responding to the open door for evangelism. Eastern Europe is open for specialized Christian workers and there is a window of opportunity for the Wesleyan Church. Permission has been granted for Wesleyan World Missions to explore and launch new ministries in Eastern Europe. Wesleyans across the church are giving to make this possible. $32,000 has already been raised to send Bibles to Russia. Today is the day of salvation, an open door of opportunity. Our greatest need is for missionaries and for adequate resources to send them to meet this great opportunity. This future challenge affects each one of us. You can be involved in the mission of Wesleyan World Missions. Pray for God's strength for the present task and wisdom for the future challenge. Read Wesleyan World Magazine to become more aware of the needs. Call Wesleyanophone to get up-to-date prayer concerns. Order World Mission videos to catch the personal vision of our missionaries. Give toward the support of Wesleyan missionaries. The heart of missions is the missionary. And the heart of mission support is giving to missionaries. The challenge of open doors in Eastern Europe can only be met through giving sacrificial giving by each of us. Go in answer to God's call. As Christians, God has a job for each of us to do. First, we need to start doing it here at home. Second, God may want to use the gifts and talents He has given us overseas. Be open to answer His call, part-time or full-time missionary service. I firmly believe that our ministries to the world are only limited by our faith and obedience. The harvest is ripe, the doors are wide open, and the workers are being requested to go now.